You all told me in the comments I shouldn't use alligator clips like this, and of course you're right, but I couldn't really find what I wanted to buy off the shelf, so let's make something better. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. I have been completely swamped for the last couple of weeks getting electronic lead screw kits assembled and back in stock. They're back, by the way, so if you've been waiting, they're now available. But with all the extra hours spent on that, I haven't had much time in the shop. So today we're gonna to overdo something simple, a banana jack adapter for my Siglent electronic load. This is my Siglent electronic load. You saw this in a previous video where I was testing the 5.4 volt regulators for the gauge amplifier. Now this particular unit, for whatever reason, just has these binding posts. It doesn't have the combination posts that allow you to use four millimeter banana jacks. I mean, most pieces of equipment like this would allow you to just insert a banana jack in the end of the binding post, but these ones are just pure binding posts. So the last time I used them, I just used alligator clips. Okay, let's flip those around so the electrons go the right direction. And I got a whole bunch of comments about how horrible this was. And you're right, if I'm gonna run this thing at its max current, that's really not a good idea. Now for the testing I was doing, I was running like 11 milliamps, it would have been fine. But the right thing to use here are spade terminals. And I looked through my test terminal bag and this is what I found. And this is really just intended for a test probe, not for high current. To make an adapter here, I need some dimensions. Let's start with the diameter of the terminal post here. That looks like that's an M6 screw. And if I just zero out on the diameter and measure across the outside of the posts, that will give me the center to center distance. And that looks like it's about 30 millimeters. So M6 screws on 30 millimeter centers. Those are nice round numbers. That's probably how this was designed. Now what I would like to do is design a PCB that fits over those terminals under the binding posts and then provides jacks for standard four millimeter banana plugs. And I don't know where exactly they would need to go. If I put one of these knobs on, we can see kind of how much space it occupies. So up above it, and to the left, there's not really enough space. They could go down below as long as we keep it off the desk or we could put them over on the right. I'm not really sure what the best solution is, but we can make up some prototypes real quick and try to figure it out. The other thing is that I do need the terminals to be on three quarter inch centers so I can use these standard combination plugs. This one has a BNC connector on it, but there are other ones that just take wires. The critical dimension here is that they are three quarters of an inch on center. So that's the primary design constraint for the banana jacks. Let's take this information, go over to Fusion 360 and design something. Though before we jump right into that, we should probably figure out the parts we're gonna use. This is Mouser Electronics, and I'm here in the test plugs and test jack section. And as you can see, there is all manner of things. There's some PCB mount stuff, there's some terminal mount stuff, there's some spade lug mount stuff. Um, I, I need to narrow this down. So let's just look at banana jacks. That narrows it down to 438 items. Okay, so these are all jacks. Those thread through a panel and have solder lugs. That one's got a tab, that one's got a flat tab. Some of these are uninsulated. There's all kinds of stuff in here. This one down here at the bottom actually looks kind of interesting. It's a double jack that's already on the right three quarter inch centers. But again, it doesn't mount in a PCB, which is what I want. Now there's one that mounts in a PCB. What category is that in? Looks like that's marked as safety jack PCB. Let's select that type. And that gives us two remaining results. Okay, well, let's look at them. These are made by Pomona Electronics. That's a quality manufacturer. Let's take a closer look at it. That looks like what I want. It looks like it would be nice and stable on a good thick PCB. We've got the center post and we've got four solder terminals around it to provide mechanical support. Looks like it's rated for 24 amps. That should be sufficient for you know anything where a banana jack would be sufficient. So let's see what kind of data they provide. Do they have a 3D model? And yes, they have a 3D model. In fact, it's quite detailed. It's got all of the extra pins and the shape of the plastic molding. I think this is gonna make it nice and easy to design. It looks like they also have it in black so we can get them as a red and black pair, have them in stock. They are a little bit pricey, $11.39 a piece. That's not cheap, but it's a good brand name. The specs are good. I feel pretty confident designing around this and we only need two of them, so that should be fine. 
I didn't feel like a full 3D scan was really necessary for this project, so I just took a photograph nice and square on the front of the unit and we'll design around that. We'll just select Insert, Canvas, and then select the photo. I already uploaded the photo into the project. We'll pick the XZ plane and import our photo. Now we can scale it here, but that's not very precise. The best way to do this is to come over here to our item under Canvases, right click and select Calibrate. Then we can come in here and select two points and enter a dimension. And I'll just pick the top center of these terminals. I know those are 30 millimeters apart. I'll enter that value. And now the image has been scaled to the correct size. So now I can just create a sketch. I'll create that on the same XZ plane. And we'll come in here and start putting in some geometry. Hit C for circle and draw a couple of circles where we want the holes for those terminals. Let's start dimensioning some things. I want these to be equal size, so I'll use the equals constraint for that. Then I'll select the centers of the circle, hit D for dimension, and type in the 30 millimeter center to center distance. Now the size of the hole is gonna be, let's go six and a half millimeters, just so we have a little bit of leeway there. And then we need to make sure that they are exactly horizontal from one another. So we'll select the centers and click the horizontal vertical constraint. Then we can come in, adjust those, and get them lined up with the photo. And now we have the basis for designing the rest of the PCB. So I'll just pull out some circles from this. Um, let's again set those equal, pick a dimension, D for dimension, and enter say 25 millimeters. That seems reasonable. And I can hit L for line and just start drawing some lines to establish where the outside edges of the PCB need to be. Now, like any good cooking show, I have one of these already prepared in advance and I've got the entire sketch already in here. Now it is a little bit hard to see this against the photo in the background. The photo is really just there so I have a guide, but if I come down here to the timeline, double click on the canvas, I can change the opacity, and so I can make that lighter and it makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing with the sketch. And for the sketch, I just started with those two center points and just started drawing. I've got different size circles, some of them just construction lines, showing sort of how big the knobs are, how big the plate is for the contact, and then I've got space reserved over here for the two banana jacks. And I've got those dimension three quarters of an inch apart, and I've got this whole thing laid out to the shape of the PCB. And then from there, I just started extruding. So I've extruded this as a two millimeter thick PCB because I want that to be pretty rigid. And then I just took the dimensions off the data sheet for those terminals. I didn't bother with the 3D model at this point. I just have a rough idea of where they're gonna be located and how big they're gonna be. And that gives me something that I can 3D print to test. I also did a version for the low terminal position where I have it slung down below the bottom. Again, I just used guidelines in the sketch for the size of the knobs to sort of get an idea of where this stuff needed to go, the dimensions of the terminals, a little bit of space around them, and just sketched something up and extruded it just so that I could get a physical idea of how big this thing was gonna be and how it was gonna fit together. I spent maybe 15 or 20 minutes sketching these up, sent them to the 3D printer, they took about 15 minutes to print, and now I have something that I can physically go test before I start spending any money on this project. The designs look good in Fusion, but Fusion is not the real world, so let's try these actually on the load. Looks like I got the whole spacing right. These are just printed in PLA, but it's enough just to see the physical spacing and make sure everything is gonna work. Get that tightened down, and this looks pretty reasonable was able to get the nuts tightened. I've got plenty of space to get in here with the banana jacks. The spacing looks right for my three quarter inch combo jacks. Those look pretty good. It is pretty flexible. Again, this is not a PCB. This isn't a fiber reinforced material. This is just PLA, but it kind of gives me an idea of how it's gonna fit and I can compare the two designs. That's a lot of flex, but let's see how the other one works. Got it right here, again, two millimeter thick simulated PCB. Hole spacing looks good. Put the nuts on, tighten that down, and that is quite a lot more rigid. And of course, once it's a fiber reinforced board, it should be even better. This fits in here. The jacks work. 
of course, you know, it's always good to check that just to make sure I didn't make some kind of stupid mistake. This seems like a pretty convenient location. We've got plenty of clearance to the knob. We can get at all of the controls. I really like this version of it. Does it hit the desk though? Looks like no. If I put that down near the base of the rubber foot, looks like it's going to clear a desk surface if this were sitting down on a desk. So I think this is going to be the design we want to go with. Now, of course, it should have been obvious that this was going to be more rigid just because of the cross-sectional area here. You can see I've got about twice as much width here as I do on the side terminal version, and that's why it's so much more rigid. Of course, now that I think about it, I should have done both and used the side terminals to bring out the remote sense jacks from the back. I might still do that. I have to think about that. But for now, I think this is the version we're going to go with. I designed the PCB using KiCad. Behold the complexity of the schematic. We've just got our two stud holes and our two banana jacks and they're connected together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not really that spectacular. I didn't end up downloading the footprints. I ended up just uh, creating them myself from the data sheet and this is what I ended up with. Got the two mounting holes for the studs. Those are just two big plated through hole pads. And I've got 10 millimeter traces connecting those down to the footprints for the jacks. Now I've got those traces on the front and the back of the board and I'm planning to use two ounce copper. So there's a lot of material there. That should be sufficient by my calculations for about 15 amps. Now to bring in the perimeter of the board, I could have just imported it from Fusion, but it's hard to get things lined up. So I ended up just drawing it out again using the dimensions from the Fusion drawing. And you can see if you just select something and hit E for edit, you can actually go in and edit the physical coordinates where they're located. And this ended up being pretty important. I could use snap positioning for all of the millimeter stuff, but I ended up with some holes that needed to be not on good millimeter centers like this pad. You can see I've got a fractional X position there. And that's because of the three quarter inch spacing between the terminals. So it wasn't a complicated project. So I ended up just hand drawing everything and positioning it from the coordinates. There are probably other ways I could have done it. If I had chosen the right zero position, I could have switched between snapping grids, but I decided not to do that. Now by default, KiCad will remove redundant traces. So you have to come in here to route and uncheck remove redundant tracks. Otherwise, when you draw the track on the front, it'll delete the one on the back and vice versa. If you want them both to stay, you have to turn off that feature. So this all looks pretty good. We can pop up the 3D preview just as a sanity check. And yeah, that looks exactly like what I expected. That 15 amp max that I have on there, that's based on a 10 degrees Celsius temperature rise on those tracks based on an online calculator I found. I don't really think you're going to be wanting to use banana jacks for 15 amps, but if you want to, technically this stuff is rated for that. This all looks nice and clean. The clearances look clean. I think we're ready to make these. So I do have the fabrication toolkit installed in KiCad, so I can just click and it will, with that one click, create all the files I need to have these fabricated. Now I do most of my fabrication with JLC PCB. This is not sponsored, even though they keep bugging me for sponsorships, I've just never gotten around to replying to them. So yeah, I'm not getting paid for this, but it's just a tool that I use and I'm pretty happy with their service. Just drag the Gerber file zip in here and start selecting some parameters. I do want a two millimeter thick board for the additional rigidity and I do want two ounce copper. And you can see, that pushes the price up. They're quoting me $48.60 for five boards. Now there is something kind of interesting here. If we say, how about 20 instead? Well, that's only 54. What about 30? That's only 58. But if we select 50, the price actually goes down to $38, which is less than the cost for five boards. I don't know exactly why this happens, but it's worth kind of poking around. Yeah, 75 boards, the price continues to go up. So let's go ahead and select 50. I'll have some spares available and uh, maybe I'll put those up on eBay. Check the video description for a link if you're interested. 3860 for 50 boards, that's a pretty good deal. Of course, there's going to be shipping and other stuff on top of that. 
Oh, and I almost forgot, I do want to select lead-free hot air solder leveling. That puts the price up a little bit, but still, $44 plus shipping for 50 boards. Yeah, it definitely pays to play around with the quantity and look at the pricing. I'll get these ordered, and if the project works, I'll go ahead and put the spares up on eBay, and uh, you guys can have a shot at them. The boards are back from the fab, and they look really good. They look exactly like the 3D model preview in KiCad. I really could not be happier with these. It's a simple board, but they are really clean. Of course, the spacing is correct. I've got the extra space there because I use six and a half millimeter holes. Let's go ahead and put the nuts on and see what the rigidity is like. Those look really good. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I've got the connectors here. They are just individually bagged. These arrived from Mouser a couple of days ago. Let me get these soldered onto the board and we can do some testing. Actually soldering these onto the board is harder than it looks. There is a lot of copper and it's two ounce copper. So it takes a lot of heat to make good solder joints here, especially if you're using lead free solder like I am. I have a little Heiko soldering station that does pretty well. I think it's 65 Watts and I use this blunt tip and that just enables it to transfer a lot more heat into the joint without the tip cooling down or more precisely it has the temperature sensor much closer to the solder joint so it can react more quickly and dump more heat into the joint but i just held it on there for a while let everything heat up let the solder flow in well and this looks fantastic there's plenty of rigidity there it's really easy to access with the plugs I think this is going to work really well. I do think that the low position for those jacks is much better than putting them up on the side. And yeah, there's plenty of rigidity for putting in these double jacks as well. I think this is going to work. These are the shrouded safety jacks, so if you have these shrouded test probe plugs, those will fit. I don't have a lot of those in my collection, but it's nice to have the flexibility. Now the one thing I don't really like about this is that there is a lot of exposed metal and the metal that's supporting these jacks is actually potentially live. So I'd like to design a plastic shroud that will go over this to protect that. So let's go back to Fusion and make it happen. I want the shroud to fit perfectly. So I'm gonna get rid of the original model here and I'm gonna bring in the PCB that I exported from KiCad as a step file. You can see that the step file from KiCad does have facets here on the side. It's not a smoothly modeled curve like the original. See if I turn the original Fusion model back on, it's a smooth curve. This is just the nature of what KiCad exports. It does make it a little bit harder to deal with in here, but it'll work and it'll be the right dimensions. Let me turn off the models I had for the jacks and bring in the ones that I downloaded from Mouser and these the models are not exactly perfect. The positioning of these pins is not exactly right. I know that the location of the holes in the PCB is right because I soldered the real jacks in and these models are not exactly right, but they should be close enough for modeling the shroud. So I've designed this in two pieces. There's a piece here that snaps over the PCB. There's enough space to get the nuts in there and to go over the jacks. And then there's a second part that fits down over the jacks. And this will provide a little bit of support because it's fairly tight fitting. I designed it with just a little bit of space. By the time you 3D print it and the surface is a little bit rough and has ridges, it'll fit pretty tightly. And then there's a little ridge here on the inside to catch the chamfered bottom side of the jack to hold it on. Now the primary benefit of designing this in two pieces is to make it easier to 3D print. I have these two flat surfaces that can each be placed flat down on the bed and the parts can be printed without support. If I tried to print this as one unit, it would require a lot of support material and then a lot of support removal. But making it two pieces, I can make this much easier to print. Now I'm printing this on the Bamboo Lab P1S and I'm printing it in the Bamboo Lab high temperature PA carbon fiber. So this is a carbon fiber reinforced nylon. Now normally the P1S printer, which is less expensive than the X1 Carbon, is not able to print abrasive materials because it has a stainless steel nozzle and it has stainless steel extruder gears. However, they do sell replacement hardened steel nozzles and hardened steel gears. So I bought a set of each, it was like 30, 35 bucks. 
I swapped them into the printer and now the less expensive P1S has most of the capabilities in terms of filament handling as the X1 Carbon. Now you can see I'm using glue on the bed and that is because the particular bed material that came on the bed with the P1S doesn't stick very well to this nylon material. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but if you add glue stick, it works great. And these are the parts right off of the printer. You can see a little bit of shininess on that surface. That is from the glue stick. If I really cared, I would get a wet rag and wipe that off, but I don't really care that much, which I know is incongruent with the amount of effort I've put into this project in general. Snap the shroud half on and that is beautiful. Now the openings in the cover there should be enough to allow the base contact here on the nut to fit in there. And they do fit pretty tightly, which gives it a little bit more lateral support and helps keep it centered and level. And that looks and feels great. Tying the two jacks together allows them to support each other a little bit. So when you put four sideways on one jack, it's transferred to the combination of both jacks and it makes the whole thing even more rigid than it was before. Well, that looks great. Let's power up a power supply and test it. Got my Rigold DP832 down here. I assume that connecting a piece of Rigold equipment to a piece of Siglin equipment isn't going to cause an explosion, but we'll find out. Select channel two here. We'll set that to 24 volts and three amps. We're not going to run it that hot, but that'll just give us something we can test with. Hook up the cables. And let's set this to constant current. And let's set it to one amp and see what happens. Switch on the power supply and you can see the 24 volts comes across. That's being measured accurately and we'll switch on the load. And with a one amp load, we're seeing just a little bit of voltage drop, measuring 23.996 on the supply and 23.967 up above here. So looks like we're dropping about three hundredths of a volt across these banana jacks and cables. I think that is fantastic. And of course, if we were using the remote sense terminals, we wouldn't even have to deal with that. So this is great. I think this is going to work great for my application. And it looks so much better than clamping those alligator clips on the side of the posts. We truly live in wondrous times. I just designed something in my computer, clicked a few buttons and had it manufactured and delivered halfway around the world in a few days. And then on top of that, I had my personal robot make some plastic parts to tidy up the whole project in a nice neat package, just like I bought one. As usual, the files for this project, including the Gerber files for the PCB and the 3D models, are on Patreon. Patrons can download files for all of my projects while helping to support the channel. And if you're already a patron, thank you. You make it possible for me to do this. Thank you for watching.